Hi, and welcome to a, uh, the second video, part two of uh, the extracellular matrix and the components of the extracellular matrix. In the last video, we talked about collagen and how collagen is 25 to 35 percent of your body, and it consists of, uh, you know, these this triple these triple helical structures. Uh, and you can watch the previous video, um, video 36 if you want to learn more about that. So we're on to the second component or the second molecule, if you will, of the extracellular matrix and that's elastin. And elastin gives this, uh, gives the extracellular matrix recoil. So if you had a tissue here and you compressed it like this, you know, it compressed for a certain time and then as soon as you took away that stress, it would, uh, it would recoil back it would recoil back, and and that's due to the uh, elastin molecule inside. It's it's um, has glycine, a lot of glycine, amino acid glycine. And remember in the last video we talked about how uh, you know there's an enzyme that that's dependent on vitamin C, and that makes these bonds between this triple helical structure of collagen. Well, elastin is kind of the same thing, but it doesn't have as much, you know, let's say it has one or, you know, two, it, it, there's not as many of these structures, so it, it gives it a little bit more of an elastic feel. And this is really important, let's say, for example, you have your aorta, you know, out of the top of your heart, there's your heart, out of the top of your heart, the main blood vessel that supplies uh, blood to your to the whole body is the aorta and the aorta imagine that this this heart is you know pumping a lot of blood through this aorta so as soon as this heart squeezes you know squeeze here this artery is going to expand this aorta is going to expand a little bit and then as soon as that pressure is gone as soon as that wave of pressure is gone down your aorta then it's going to recoil back in. And so you have this big, big aorta here, and it's going to need to come in and go out a lot. And so this elastin is a key part of your aorta. And in the case of a syndrome called Marfan syndrome, and we'll talk more about Marfan syndrome um, specifically when we get to the part of the videos that we're going to discuss um, each um, system of the body like the cardiovascular system, the skeletal system, the endocrine system, uh, you know when we talk about each of the systems and the diseases that are in each system we'll talk about Marfan syndrome in general and actually what causes it and all that but for now Marfan syndrome just give you a, a little a little taste of what's to come is that Marfan syndrome is a disease, it's a genetic disease in where these um, these extracellular matrix isn't um, isn't up to par, and so it affects these va these vessels, your blood vessels, and the ability to uh, go in and out and adapt to the stress with this elastin elastin component in it. So let's discuss our next structures: proteoglycans and hyaluronidin. So proteolytic proteoglycans are are this long chain of amino acids. They're all kind of connected here, and with with these uh, little side chains here. You know, every few residues or every few that's what they call these. As sometimes you hear them say residues, these are just uh, amino acids here. These are amino acids. There's 20 amino acids in the body, and amino acids makes up a chain of amino acids, make up a protein, if you will. And they call they're glycosylated, which means there's just sugars attached to these. So these are amino acids here, and these little attachments are called glyco glycosaminoglycans, GAGs, if you will. And you know they are responsible for, and you can do more research about these 
on yourself. But, but this is the primary reason why water comes in. Is because water can kind of sit in these, sit in here and kind of uh, are attached to these side chains, and they can, um, you know, these these guys are are primarily responsible for for this water, uh, the water content of the extracellular matrix or the interstitial matrix, um, and these are just considered kind of a filler, if you will, f for all the space and. So hyaluronidin is also called hyaluronic acid, and it's found mostly, well not mostly, but it's found in cartilage, and it gives the resilience and the toughness of cartilage. Also these, because they hold water, um, these proteolytoglycans also are responsible for, um, you know, some of these ions like sodium, potassium, other these molecules, hormones, they kind of all can sit in here and act as a pool or a reservoir for these these substances too. Um, this is kind of the third type that we're talking about in the extracellular matrix. And these are also responsible for kind of cells traveling through, um, hormones traveling through the extracellular matrix. Um, these are also found in cell membranes. Cell membranes. Um, this hy hyaluronin is also a part of a cancer. And you can, you know, Google that or look into that if you'd want. Um, there's some links there with that. And you know these these guys are interesting because they they do a lot and they're kind of just for for the big picture they're kind of a filler of the extracellular matrix. So in the next class of proteins um, that we're going to talk about in the extracellular matrix is the adhesion uh, adhesion glycoproteins and adhesion receptors. So if we have you know, a basement membrane here, we have epithelial cells here, we have a vascular um, capillary, and then we have this another basement membrane, and then we have uh, fibroblasts in here. Fibroblasts. So this is the basement membrane, basement membrane. And then we have these, you know, scaffolding, if you will, these three-dimensional structures here that will kind of give a shape. We have um, of the adhesive glycoproteins. What they do is they allow the epithelial cells attach to the basement membrane. They also allow cells to attach to each other. And finally, they allow these uh, extracellular matrix uh, pro uh, proteoglycans to attach to each other too. And fibronectin is the major um, component of this interstitial matrix, interstitial matrix. And the uh, laminin is a major component of the basement membrane. We'll talk about these individually. And then for the receptors, we have these CAM adhesion molecules. So let me, these, cam, these adhesion receptors are these uh, cell adhesion molecules or these CAM molecules. And there are um, four groups. There are immunoglobins, Cadherins, selectins, and integrins. We kind of already talked about selectins a little bit with leukocyte recruitment and activation. How the these selectins right here will pop up on the endo the endothelial lining inside the capillary and this let's say this is a leukocyte. Let's put white blood cell. These um, selectins here. There's P and E selectin that we've talked about so far they'll kind of attach to here and kind of slow down the white blood cell and then the white blood cell will diapodes out. And then now we're going to talk about integrins. And these right here are the integrins. But for the first uh, topic, 
or the first one, let's talk about this fibronectin here. So fibronectin is primarily secreted by fibroblasts. And it is just kind of an adhesion molecule. Um, and, and it binds to a lot of different a lot of different substances, but it's primarily secreted by fibroblasts in the extracellular matrix, and it, it just is used as part of the process of making these, uh, you know, these structures here to to kind of combine them to make kind of a spot weld, if you will, or or a connection between these these two. And also, there's another part of the uh, uh, fibronectin that's inside the blood. So fibronectin can also, I'll just draw another line over here, can also be in the blood, in the plasma, and that helps sometimes to, f to form the initial blood clot um, to stop bleeding. So next we'll talk about uh, laminin. And laminin helps with, it's the primary um, substance inside this basement membrane. And it can also help with uh, motility of cells, uh, proliferation, and and so we'll go dividing or mitosis, and differentiation. You know, if a cell wants to go here or here, if it was a stem cell, for example, laminin also helps with um, differentiation, which you know, these cells can differentiate into different types of cells. Fibronectin also plays a role in motility. Um, and, um, you know, when these cells get out, you know, these leukocytes get out here into the extracellular matrix, it kind of helps with directions. Um, it's called, they're all kind of interrelated, if you will. And finally, integrins. Let's say this is a cell a white blood cell, WBC for white blood cell. And integrins are receptors in this plasma plasma membrane here. And when this white blood cell, for example, if this white blood cell was in this bloodstream and it diapodized out, it came out through leukocyte recruitment and activation, um, these integrins are um, receptors not totally specific, but um, kind of specific to ECM components for ECM components. So if you, you know, they're, they're, and then inside they are, they'll set off a cascade kind of like the growth factor cascade with IP3, um, you know, those other pathways that we talked about, they'll set off pathways for cell motility, uh, dividing, differentiation, those types of, those types of things. So integrins are uh, a subset of cell adhesion molecules, CAMs, and integrins are on almost every animal cell. Every cell in your body has, you know, these uh, integrin receptors. And except obviously, obviously your red blood cells, but most of them, you know, that when they diapodes out here into this extracellular matrix, they're used for signaling um, so the cell can navigate around and know where to go and, and all of that. So that concludes the, this video, wraps up the video on uh, the, the components of the extracellular matrix and... Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.